In this video, we're building a floating shelf for our new kitchen. The shelf is gonna span all the way across this wall. We're gonna make it out of oak. It's gonna be super thin, really strong, and have integrated lights. And there's gonna be no visible fasteners. Now this is actually the first time that I'm building floating shelves. I made these things from a workshop a couple of years ago. These are also not only super strong, but also really thin. These are attached by drilling holes into the wooden studs in the wall and then screwing thread rods right into them. It's a method I actually came up with myself and I'm really proud of it. And if you want to see how I built these, there's a video up there. But the wall in my kitchen doesn't have any wooden beams inside of it. So the shelf we're building today will hang straight onto the drywall. For which I think I have a really good solution so that you can do it as well. So just like these shelves, the shelf for our kitchen is gonna be made out of only 20 millimeter thick wood. I could of course make it out of rough lumber, plain and thickness this the right size, and then make it out of just one piece. The problem with that is that long and thin pieces of wood have a tendency to want to bow and curl. And we don't want that. One way of dealing with this would be to slice this board up to thinner strips and then glue them back together. That way it's a lot more stable. But that sounds a lot of work, especially when you have pre-made boards that are already glued together in the right thickness. This is a lovely 20 millimeter oak board that is glued up off continuous boards. So there are no joints in the length direction. So we'll start by cutting a piece the right size for our shelf. And then also cut it to the right length. <laughs> well, it's not that big, but that is our shelf. Now on to the first of four 3D printed parts that are gonna help with this process. First one is gonna help us make a big rounded end on one side of the shelf to make it match the end of our countertop, which also curves and goes around into the window opening. This 3D printed guide gets clamped onto the end of the board and these two tabs make sure that everything is aligned properly. And then with the router with the following wheel, which will follow this curvature, we can make that perfect rounded end. I'll cut off most of it with a jigsaw and then run the router to clean up the edge. And just like that, we've got a perfect end to our shelf. A teeny tiny bit of sanding to make the curve perfect, and we're ready to put a chamfer on both the top and the bottom of the front edge. And we've got ourselves a shelf, round the corner, chamfers on the edges, looks really good, essentially ready to hang on the wall. But I said that I want lights in it. And for that, we're gonna use some really cool LED strips. These things are tiny, but extremely powerful. Normal LED strips usually have 60 or 120 LEDs per meter. This thing has 240 and they're super tiny. They're just under five millimeters wide. So twice LEDs, twice the power and half the size. Now this thing will get installed into one of these aluminum tracks. This track will then fit into a groove that we need to router into the bottom of our shelf and be covered with this tiny diffuser to make the light super nice and even. I want the light to sit fairly close to the edge and one way of doing it would be routering a straight line and stopping right there. But we don't like to make it easier for ourselves, so I wanna try and continue that groove to follow along the curve so that the light goes all the way around and ends all the way up against the wall. <laughs> now there's two problems with that. One is that this aluminum bit is straight. We'll worry about that later. And the second is that we need to make a curved groove. On to 3D printed guide number two out of four, this thing. In much the same way as the previous one, this one is meant to perfectly index onto our part. And then this groove is for the bushing on the router to follow along. And I guess just to be annoying, the aluminum track is six and a half millimeters and my router bit is six. So this slot is actually offset by half a mil so I can ride the router around both sides to get the perfect width. I think that worked. I was shooting for a 10 millimeter offset. <laughs> so I'll call that a success. And now because of that weird thickness of just six and a half millimeters, I'll make the rest of the groove with my track saw by just running multiple passes at the same depth until we get the right width. Then all that's left is a bit of sanding and a couple of coats of oil. And at least the woodworking part of this project is essentially done. Because now two days later, we're left with this awesome finished piece of wood. 
There is quite a bit of shine to this now, which is because of the second layer I put on. The first one was a pigmented oil that I put on and wiped back off to give it some color. And then the second coat, I brushed on a clear oil and let that dry to give it some added protection. The oil I used for the second coat was a satin finish, which after I dried, I found a bit too shiny. But I've got a good trick for that. Rub it down with a fine grade scotch wrap pad. Knocks down the shine quite a bit to this lovely and even finish. Now, the next challenge is that we've got a curved track that we need to fit a straight piece of aluminum track into. Which initially, I didn't think was going to be this hard, but judging by my previous attempts, is going to be quite the challenge. I thought, this is pretty thin, so I should be able to just carefully bend it by hand. But the problem is, because it's hollow in the middle, as you bend it, the channel collapses, which obviously means that we can't fit neither the light or the diffuser on there. So my next solution to try and solve this was this contraption. My thinking was that if you manage to evenly bend the channel around a curve, it wouldn't buckle in on itself. So this thing has right curve with a couple of bearings that are the exact distance away from it, and then just go ahead and bend this thing around the curve, which helped a lot, but it still collapsed a little bit, causing the diffuser to not fit inside anymore. And this is not a solution for it. This is literally just a solid stick of 3D printed plastic that should exactly fit inside of the gap in this channel. And it even is a pretty snug fit. And now if this works, I should be able to just line this piece up, clamp it in place, and bend it around the curve. Which actually seems to work really well. But now on to the next issue, which is when I let this go again, there's something called spring back, which means that the metal wants to open back up again. Although we bent a pretty nice curve, it's still not the right radius, and it's not bent enough. And that's why on the other side of this template, there's another curve that's a little bit smaller and bent more. So next up, I'll repeat the exact same process on this one. And then when I tested this, that was still not enough. So I had to make a third one with an even smaller radius. And after using all three and a lot of small adjustments back and forth, finally, we are left with a track that now actually, at least I hope it does, fits in there pretty smoothly. And here goes nothing, because I don't really think that I can get this thing back out once I pound the track into the wood. Which means that we're left with an aluminum track that's stuck inside the wood and a piece of plastic that's definitely stuck inside of the aluminum. Because of course, as we bent it, it clamped down on it. Onto my party trick. So the plastic that I've used to 3D print this purple bit is called PLA, and it's the most common 3D printing plastic. Now PLA normally gets printed at 220 degrees, but it goes soft at around 60. So my thinking is that with a bit of careful heating, I should be able to, even with my bare hands, just pull this thing out. Look at how soft it went. Normally it's not a great property of PLA that it gets soft so quickly, but in this case, really helpful. That sure was nerve wracking, but we're only halfway there. Because the next one is the diffuser that also needs the same bend. I think this is acrylic, it's pretty thin and quite brittle. I did just try and bend it around the curve, but it just breaks. And the small bits at the bottom that lock it in place just break off. So here's to the last sketchy bit of this process. With most of it securely inside of the track already, I'm yet again gonna try and sheet it up and slowly bend it on a turn manually. Oh man, good thing that wasn't super stressful. The whole thing actually turned out quite all right. It's by no means perfect. There's small gaps here and there. I think my router template could have done with a couple of tenths less clearance, but all in all, I'm super happy. What's left to do is take this diffuser back off, which is now my time to cool down a bit and is now keeping its shape and trim off the ends of the aluminum extrusion. In my opinion, I have one of the best jobs. I mean, I get to build fun and cool projects for myself, and I get to make videos about it that I get to show you guys. And essentially, that's my job. So I figured instead of telling you about today's sponsor, I'd rather just say thank you to everyone that makes all of this possible. And a large part of the reason why I'm able to do this, in case you haven't seen my other videos before, is that I'm making design things like 3D printed boxes, assort my cases with 3D printed boxes to organize everything, furniture, build plants, as well as molds to cast your own planters, and many other things I sell on my website, 
He helps the Edge shop and it's the sales of those items that essentially finance my projects. And by the way, I'm definitely not saying that that's the only way you can support me. Just by watching these videos, interacting with them, giving the thumbs up or maybe giving a comment down below helps a ton. But in case you want to build something fun, maybe challenge yourself and support me at the same time, checking out my website would be a great way to do so. You can get anything from build plans for this entire work table to the files for these 3D printed boxes, gear advice, furniture, pots, planters, and much, much more. And because you guys are awesome, as a thank you, all the files for all four 3D printed tools in this video will be able to download for free on my website. Oh, and by the way, I'm currently working on an organizer system for my entire kitchen, hence all the Tupperware and new 3D printed parts. Stay tuned for all that in an upcoming video, but now let's finish the shelf. I've reassembled everything and I've also installed the LED strip inside of the track, taking care to push it down properly and with that it went around the curve no problem. The only thing that I'm not super happy with is that the end of the light strip ended up a little bit long because you can only cut them at certain lengths, so I had to sort of fold around the lights on the back side which I hope is going to be fine. And now it's time to start thinking about how we're going to hang this thing on that wall. Now it will go right here. but. How do we attach it? The first step was using some tape and a laser, I marked up the line where we wanna drill our attachment points. The way we're gonna attach this shelf to the wall is quite similar to the last shelf I built in the workshop, but there's one key difference. That one, I drilled right into the wooden beams in the wall itself and then threaded in some threaded rod. Now this wall doesn't have any wooden beams, so we're gonna attach the shelf right onto the drywall. Now it is fiber reinforced drywall, so it's pretty strong. It's called Ultra Board and it's made by Nuriips, but we still need some way of getting the threaded rod inside of the wall. And we're gonna do that with some of these standard drywall anchors. You just drill a hole and insert the whole thing, and then once you tighten it down, this one mushrooms out and creates a really big area for this thing to hold. And then the inside of these has a standard threaded portion onto which we can screw our threaded rods. There's one thing that is very important when drilling the holes for the anchors. We don't want the threaded rods to stick out on an angle. So we need some way of keeping the drill bit perfectly 90 degrees towards the wall. Which brings me to 3D printed tool number three of four, this contraption. This huge thing is essentially just a drill guide. It has a hole in the back into which a long drill bit fits. You put the whole thing up against the wall and then when you drill in, you're sure that the drill goes perfectly straight into the wall. And a great tip to get a perfect fit with 3D printed plastic parts like this is to print a hole that's slightly undersized and then use a cheap reamer to ream out the holes. A reamer is essentially just a really precise drill bit that's made to just take off a little bit of material you don't need anything fancy, I'll try to make a list of all the tools and equipment I used for this project and I'll leave some links down below. <laughs> First of all, straight into a metal stud. Man, I really tried my best not to find any studs. I even tried watching some old YouTube videos for where they were attached. Oh, <laughs> we'll just drill some holes in our place. Because that is the beauty of this method. We're going to later transfer these holes onto our shelf so we don't really need to be super precise. The only thing that we really care about is that they're all the same height, which is at the edge of the tape, and that they're straight into the wall, which is the reprint the part helps us with. And into the holes, we can just whack the anchors. But since my shelf is so thin, I've had to trim off the top and bottom of it. And here's a tip for how to properly install these types of wall anchors. Best thing you can do is get yourself a tool that pulls the bolt out. In my case, these bolts are too big for that standard tool. So the natural thing to do would be to crank down on this bolt and that way expanding it. But at the same time as pulling the bolt out, that puts a lot of rotation on it, which can often cause the two teeth to grind into the drywall and the whole thing just doesn't work anymore. So the trick is take the bolt out, insert a piece of the threaded rod with a washer and a nut, hold the rod in place, and by tightening the nut, we just expand the bolt without putting any rotation on it. Once it's tight enough, take it all back apart and even install the anchor without messing up the wall. We can take our threaded rod that's cut the right length, screw on two nuts onto the back and tighten them onto each other so that we can thread them into the wall until they stick out the right amount. Take the nuts back off. And now this thing is still fairly loose, but by taking one of the nuts, we can go from this loose thing and crank it tight against the wall until it's tight. 
And now to the nice part, and the reason why I drilled the holes in the walls first, we can just line this up so that we can now use the threaded rods as a reference to where to drill. All we need to do is move the shelf over by half the width of the rods, which is a four millimeter drill bit. And the mark that we make now will be the exact center where we need to drill, which brings us to the fourth and final 3D printed tool that I made. This crazy contraption is to hold a drill that will drill into the back of the board. Much the same way as the yellow one, it has a hole at the top that fits perfectly with the drill bit. But on the inside here, there's another thing. It's a metal bushing for which I 3D printed some threads that this thing screws into. Up here, it just needs to guide the smooth metal, so this can be plastic. But down there, we have the sharp edges of the drill bit, so the metal bushing will guide it and not wear out. Now, I haven't tried this yet, but the thinking was you just slide this thing over the edge, line it up, and clamp down and it just be sure and I guess we just drill a hole and now other than making a mess in my living room hopefully we should have a hole exactly where the mark is <laughs> that's really deep and didn't go through any of the sides we'll just repeat that process for all the holes and now all that's left is the scary part let's see if this thing fits it won't be that easy to line up all the holes and with all the friction from all the threaded rods it probably won't be easy to push them on that's all the bolts at least started in the holes and if this doesn't go all the way, it'll be such a nightmare to get back off. And I forgot to tell you, I ended up drilling the start of each one of those holes slightly larger for the nut to fit inside of. I hope. <laughs> and then for the last bit, the cables and the wiring, you may notice that there used to be a hole in the wall here with a couple of wires sticking out. That runs through a tube and comes out in the bottom of the cabinet there. So we actually planned for this when we did all the drywall over half a year ago. And when the electrician was here to run all the cabling, he also hooked up power, which means that if I did this right. Ah, yes! Man, isn't this awesome? It actually works. And it's also, of course, dimmable. It's slightly cooler at 4,000 Kelvin than the rest of the lights in here, which are 3,600, but I think I can live with that. Also, additionally, since we already ran the cable for the light, we also chose to run an additional cable. This is actually one of those universal power plugs for like a Sonos or something. So now we can plug in something like that up on the shelf without having any visible power outlets or additional wiring. And that pretty much finishes up this project. And man, doesn't this just look awesome? I'm at least super happy about the way this whole project turned out. Everything went together surprisingly well. And although it was a bit hard whacking the shelf into place, everything fit. There's nothing visible of the fastening attachments and the light is super nice and even. And the shelf has no problem handling the weight that we're gonna put on it. I mean, it's pretty sturdy actually. So again, in case you like my projects and maybe got inspired to build something for yourself, how about heading over to my website, which is alch.shop and pick yourself up some 3D files or build plans. Buying things from my website also greatly supports the work that I do. So thank you so much. But as for now, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.